Night and day, at home or away, always carry Tums, T-U-M-S. Tums, famous quick relief for acid indigestion, presents A Date with Judy. Hello, Judy Foster speaking. Well, hello, George. I'm so glad you called. Not that I can give you a date tonight. I hope you aren't too disappointed, but I already have one, and after all, it is rather late for you to be calling, and... What's that? Oh, you wanted to talk to Randall. Well, jeepers, why didn't you say so? That's Judy, folks. Judy Foster, the cutest date in town. Your date with her each Tuesday at the same time is arranged by the makers of Tums for quick relief from acid indigestion. Well, it's a beautiful spring afternoon, and Judy is at her friend Barbara's house sitting in a swing on the front porch. Barbara speaks. Be honest, Judy. Tell me the absolute truth. How many days did you have in the last week? Three. Gee, I only had two. I struck a new low for 1944. Well, I could have had four. That is, if I'd been able to squeeze Oogie Pringle and Johnny Linker both in the same night. That's life. Every time you have a date, somebody else calls the same night. If one could only get better distribution on dates. I know, it's devastating. Still, I'd say that you and I are the most popular girls in our whole crowd. Yes. All except Tootsie Whiteman. Missy Hoffman. And Jane Tuttle. And Irene Franco. Well, anyhow, we're still more popular than Lulu Benson. Yes, definitely. Oh, yes. Now, how would you like a nice cold drink of lemonade? Why, Aunt Carrie, how adorable of you to make us lemonade. And cookies, too. This is just precious of you, Miss Winsocket. Oh, don't call me Miss Winsocket, Judy. Just call me Aunt Carrie. All Barbara's friends do. Okay, dokie, Aunt Carrie. Now, I'll just pour you both out a glass. Oh, I'm utterly mad about lemonade. It tastes just like champagne. You like champagne? I'm gaga about it. You know, I never had any. Neither did I. But I bet if I ever did, I'd be gaga about it. Oh, champagne. It sounds so delicious. Well, I've got to go back in the house. I'll just leave the picture out here with you. Thanks a billion, Aunt Carrie. Oh, you're welcome, dear. Oh, Barbara, I think your Aunt Carrie is simply adorable. She is. It's a great pity she never married. Yes, I feel dreadfully sorry for her. Wouldn't it be awful to be an old maid? Not that it could ever happen to us. Oh, naturally not. I intend to marry early. I don't. I expect to stay single for eons, having dates all over the place. I may even wait till I'm 20 to marry. 20? Jeepers, don't you think you're taking an awful chance? Probably, but I intend to risk getting stuck. Say, Judy, isn't that your brother Randolph coming up the wall? Yes, he must have smelled the cookies. Hi, girls. What are you doing? Have a cookie and pipe down. Sure. Pass the pitcher, please. But this is another glass, and I'm not going in the house to get one. Yeah, I see your point. I will therefore drink right out of the pitcher. Oh, Randolph, you were slightly disgusted. Yes, it's too bad about Aunt Carrie. Of course, there isn't any hope for her now. She's 38. And also, she has that face. Maybe a matrimonial bureau could do something for her. Randall! That's a terrific idea, isn't it? Yeah. But the man always has to see a photograph before he proposes. And once a man sees Aunt Carrie's photograph... Yes, I guess that's out. Yeah, I guess Aunt Carrie's a dead duck. I don't know. Why couldn't we send the man a picture of some other woman? That's a terrific idea. But not somebody too young like a movie star. It ought to be the picture of somebody real. Yes, it should. Hey, why couldn't we send the man Mother's picture? Mother's not so young and still she's attractive. That's marvelous. And we'll just say it's Aunt Carrie. Of course. Very clever. Except the time will come when the man will stop looking at the photograph and ask to see the genuine article. Oh, yeah. Before he married her, I suppose he would. Gee, no matter how alluring you make her at first, sooner or later he's bound to get a nasty shock. But wait, kids. Let's be logical. The important thing at the beginning is to lure a man into writing to Aunt Carrie. And once he starts writing to her, well, he may just fall in love with the letters and not care what she looks like. Yes, Aunt Carrie writes utterly gorgeously. She won all kinds of essay contests when she was a girl. During the Middle Ages? And once she won a poetry contest. She did? The prize poem started, Alas, the storm does shake the trees, And quaking are the birds and bees, The black clouds glower in the east. Tis not a night for man nor bee. Tis not a poem for man nor beast either. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Well, I'm a man, and she couldn't lure me with that. Randolph, you're not old enough to know whether you're lurable or not. Well, the important thing is to get Aunt Carrie started, and then let poetry do the rest. Absolutely. Randolph. 
Ralph, look. Right here in the Sunday paper, a perfectly terrific ad. What? In large letters, lonely. Then in small letters, it says, if so, let the Throbbing Heart Matrimonial Bureau solve your problem. Oh, isn't that a beautiful name for a matrimonial bureau, Randolph? The Throbbing Heart. Just makes me throb all over. <laughs> I'm going to write them immediately. I thought Aunt Carrie was the author in this gang. Well, Barbara's kind of afraid to mention it to her in the beginning. Aunt Carrie's shy, so I'm going to kind of get the correspondence going, and then just as soon as an enticing letter comes from a man... Enticing enough to entice Aunt Carrie? Mm-hmm. Then we'll let her take over. Well, that's white of you. Give me that piece of paper. Now, what do I say? Oh, something like, uh, Dear Throbbing Heart Matrimonial Bureau... I am very lonely, even though I'm a gorgeous woman of 38. Well, let's make her 35. After all, a man doesn't want to marry an antique. Not even if she writes poetry? Oh, be serious, Randolph. This is a very beautiful thing we're doing. Outside of working for the Red Cross or joining the wax or something, I can't think of anything nobler that Barbara and I could do than mend an aching heart. I apologize. Well, I think I'll say something like... The man of my dreams is tall, romantic, poetry-loving, wealthy, handsome... Blonde or brunette optional. Yeah, it's good to give him some leeway. Will you kindly advise me at once if you can supply me with such a gentleman? Object, matrimony. Very well put. Well, now, as soon as I get this written, I guess all we'll have to do is just sit back and wait for results. Out of the box. Oh, bring it in, Randolph. Is it there? What? An answer to my letter. Don't tell me you gave our address. Well, I'm using ours temporarily, just while we're dealing with the matrimonial bureau. As soon as we get a man, Aunt Carrie can take over. Oh. For heaven's sake, Randolph, did the letter come? Well, let's see. Uh, there's a letter from the gas company, a notice from the OPA, a postcard from Father's draft board. Please, Father, get to something important. Yeah, here it is. Throbbing Heart Matrimonial Bureau. Oh, open up. Quick, what does it say? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, dear madam, we have received your interesting letter and wish to state that upon receiving a fee of $2, the Throbbing Heart Matrimonial Bureau will be happy to forward you a list of eligible gentlemen, from which list you may take your choice. $2. Well, it was a swell idea while it lasted. Now what do we got to eat in the house? Randolph, come right back here. What do you want? I am not going to be stymied in saving Aunt Carrie from a life of misery by a paltry two dollars. Since when was two dollars paltry? I don't care. I'll raise it if I have to go out and scrub floors for it. You know, Judy, sometimes I think you're a very admirable character. I know where I'll get it. Mother! Other times I think you're a very practical character. Mother! <laughs> Well, before we find out just how much Judy's self-sacrificing spirit will cost, I want to tell you, here's how you can relieve a spell of acid indigestion in a twinkling without taking bicarbonate of soda. Here's how you can relieve those acid pains, that heartburn, that uncomfortable full feeling without taking time out from your work or play. Just carry Tums with you, and the moment any sign of acid indigestion shows, put one or two Tums in your mouth. Tums are made especially for the relief of acid indigestion. That's their whole purpose. That's their whole job. Concentrating on one thing, they do it unusually well. Why bother with makeshift when you can get specialized relief for acid indigestion? Get Tums for the tummy at any drugstore counter. Ten cents a roll or a three-roll package for a quarter. And now, back to A Date with Judy. Well, Judy and Randolph are well on their way to saving an old maid from uh, old maidhood. The lady they're doing all this for is an aunt of Judy's friend, Barbara. We pick up the kids as they rush into Barbara's house just after receiving a second letter from the matrimonial bureau. Barbara! Barbara! Here I am. Hi, Randolph. Hi, Barbara. Barbara, it came. It did? Yes, we dashed over to tell you right away. I'm dying to see it. Oh, Barbara, the throbbing heart matrimonial bureau is so efficient. They sent a whole long list of eligible men. All we have to do is just pick out the one that's the most Aunt Carrie's type and start working on him. That's terrific. Aunt Carrie might hear us. No, she's downtown today. Well, I guess she can't hear us then. Listen, 
Mervyn B. Schleppenhauser, height 5 feet 2 inches. He's too short. Yeah, look at somebody else. Oh, here's one. He's tall enough and extremely handsome, it says. And he's an explorer. Oh, Barbara, isn't that romantic? An explorer. Sounds too good to be true. There must be something wrong with him. There is. He lives in Cairo, Egypt. Mm. <laughs> well, what with the gas shortage and all, he might have a little trouble taking Aunt Carrie out on dates. Oh, jeepers. I hope everybody on the list isn't an out-of-town man. Let's see. Here's one from Chicago, Albuquerque. Here's one. Here's one from right here in town. No, honestly, who is it? Jonathan D. Inglefinger, height five foot six. Mr. Inglefinger. You know him, Randolph? Why, sure, I see him every week at scout meetings. Don't tell me he's a boy scout. No, he's a scout master. Oh, that's rather romantic, isn't it? Something like an explorer, in a way. Can you beat that? It kills me. What does, Randolph? Old Mr. Inglefinger being on a matrimonial bureau list. What do you mean, old Mr. Inglefinger? Well, he's 55 if he's a day. Maybe more. 55 and a scout master? How could that be? Well, our last five scout masters were drafted. Jeepers. But we aren't worried about Mr. Inglefinger. I thought a scout master had to be sort of rugged. Is an old man like Mr. Inglefinger practical? Oh, he works out fine. On our last hike, he broke down. And the boys got in so much practice making an emergency stretcher to bring him home on. I wonder if he's the right type for Aunt Carrie. He gives us all kinds of exercise. He does? Yeah. The time we went to Lookout Hill, Curly Whiteman and I had to make a little chair out of our hands to carry Mr. Inglefinger to the top. Oh, gee, Barbara, I'm very discouraged. Is he the only eligible man who lives in town here? Yes. Oh, then I guess Aunt Carrie will have to marry him. Yes, I guess so. Oh, well... He may be a very nice man. Oh, he is. The boys are bats about him. By the time he broke his leg, we all practically lived at the hospital. How'd he break his leg, Randolph? Well, he was showing us how to tie a noose knot, and his leg got caught in the noose. <laughs> For goodness sake, Aunt Carrie's home. Let's bring the subject up, Barbara. Yes, let's. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Aunt Carrie. Hi. Hello, Aunt Carrie. Aunt Carrie, would you consider marrying a man with a broken leg? What? Oh, his leg's all better now. It is? Oh, yeah. He's in perfect health at the moment, except for the poison ivy. Well, well, this man, whoever he is, sounds very interesting. But you know how I feel about marriage, Barbara. How, Aunt Carrie? Well, I think marriage is very nice for people who are married. But I happen to be very happy as I am. I love keeping house for Barbara and her parents, and... I have plenty to do with the Red Cross work and being a nurse's aide. But, Aunt Carrie, you don't want to be an old maid, do you? Oh, I'm afraid I do. <laughs> Anyhow, that's what I am. <laughs> and I really don't mind a bit. But, Aunt Carrie... Oh, now, stop worrying about me, dear. <laughs> I'm really not worth all the concern you're giving me. Now, I'd better go in and put the potatoes on. You see what I mean? She always talks like that. Well, I think she's just covering up. I think underneath it all, she's filled with romance and longing for a mate. Oh, quiet, ape man. You don't think we ought to give up? I definitely do not. And besides, we've already got two dollars invested in her. Absolutely. Well, then, you'll have to write the first letter to Mr. Inglefinger for her, Judy. All right. And maybe when we get a reply from him and she sees how dear and pathetic and everything he is, her heart will take pity on him. Who are we doing this for, for her or for him? For both of them. We'll be saving her from herself and him from, from the Boy Scouts. How does this sound, Randolph? Dear Mr. Inglefinger, forgive me for being so bold as to begin this correspondence, but I'm a romantic woman of 33 years of age and... Oh, I see you sniffed off a few more years. Yes. And you know how I'm going to sign her? Well, Carrie is so plebeian. I'm just going to sign her Snookums. Judy... Judy, Mr. Inglefinger replied. What does he say? Uh, dear Snookums, I received your beautiful letter and wish to state I am a sentimental gentleman of 49 years of age and would like very much... Oh, Judy, Aunt Carrie still won't consider marriage. What'll we do? Well, I guess we'll just be getting another letter. Randolph, guess what? Mr. Inglefinger wants Snookums' photograph. The time has come. Well, in view of what Aunt Carrie looks like... I think the only safe course still is to send him Mother's photograph. Oh, Judy, did you really send your Mother's picture? Yep. Randolph took the one on Father's bureau and we mailed it the day before yesterday. We ought to get a reply out of Mr. Inglefinger any minute. 
Where are you going, Mother? Downtown, dear. I've got some shopping to do. Well, enjoy yourself. Oh, oh, oh I think it's hard, and I, I seem to have run right into you. Yeah, that's quite all right. Uh, Snookum. Sir? I'd know you anywhere. Oh. You're even more beautiful than your picture. My picture? Really, I, I don't know oh, you. Oh, I knew you'd be that way. Shy and girly. Well, now, really, sir, if this is a, a well, a pickup, I think that... Oh, snookum, snookum. <laughs> oh, you're just the way I knew you'd be. Fiery and headstrong. Well, I hope you don't mind my saying so, but I think that you're uh, crazy or something. I suppose I am crazy about you. Yes, quite true. Well, uh, please excuse me. I'm in quite a hurry. But Schnookums! 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 Uh, Judy has really upset the matrimonial apple cart. We'll hear more in a moment. Say, uh, do you ever suffer from acid stomach? Is acid indigestion your lot after excessive smoking or hurried eating or worry or nervous strain? Then you ought to get acquainted with Tums. Tums, spelled T-U-M-S, are quick and decisive relief for acid indigestion. They are made to order for relief of acid stomach discomfort. Tums almost instantly neutralize the excess acid in the stomach. They quickly relieve those mean acid pains, that sharp heartburn and oppressive fullness. Almost before you know it, your stomach feels peaceful and contented again. You've probably never known such relief for acid indigestion as Tums, and yet Tums are guaranteed to contain no soda. By all means, try Tums if you're subject to acid indigestion. Carry them with you always, and you'll always be prepared with ready relief. Get Tums for the tummy today and see how they take the ache out of acid stomach. Only ten cents a roll or a three-roll package for a quarter at any drugstore. Back to a date with Judy. Well, Randolph, Judy, and Judy's friend Barbara have taken it upon themselves to marry off Barbara's Aunt Carrie through the kind offices of a matrimonial bureau. But the kids have sent the man of their choice mother's photograph instead of Aunt Carrie's. We find Judy and Randolph at home. Oh, Randolph, this letter that came today from Mr. Inglefinger is simply... Well, Arden. Well, I guess Mother's pictures put the final clincher on him. No, all we have to do is just pop Aunt Carrie on him and the deal's set. Well, what if he wants to marry Mother instead of Aunt Carrie? Oh, Randolph, don't be silly. But look what he says in his letter. After looking at your picture, I feel you are definitely the girl of my dreams. Yes, it does seem kind of definite, doesn't it? His dreams are going to have to take one heck of a big switcheroo when he sees Aunt Carrie. <laughs> But when he realizes Aunt Carrie wrote those beautiful letters... Palsy, do you realize you wrote those beautiful letters? That's right. I did, didn't I? When he finds out, what if he wants to marry you? Well, things are a little complicated at the moment. But I'm sure with a little thought we can straighten them all out. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, hi, Mother. Hello, Mother. Well, I had quite a day. You did? Yeah. Children, do you know a man tried to pick me up downtown? Really? Yeah. A thing like that hasn't happened to me in years. Well, you know, you're a pretty attractive dame. Well, thank you, dear. <laughs> I guess I... Well, I suppose I must have a certain something. <laughs> Wait till I tell your father. He'll appreciate you twice as much as usual. <laughs> Can you imagine that man? He called me Snookums. Snookums. Uh-oh. <laughs> and all the way home, I had the strangest feeling I was being followed. Followed? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised at all if it were this man. Did the man, uh, did he say what his name was by any chance? Well, of course not. You think I got that familiar with him? Well, I guess as soon as he addressed you, 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 you just gave him a dirty look and walked right away. Well, naturally. Did oh. he, uh, did he look as if he had poison ivy? Poison ivy? <laughs> Why do you ask, Randolph? Oh, just a passing thought. Pay no attention. Oh, you know, on second thought, he... He did rather look as if he had poison ivy. His face was kind of uh, red. Would you say he was five foot six in height? Yes, about... Judy, do you know who this man is? Oh, no, no. That is, not unless he's Mr. Inglefinger. Well, who is Mr. Inglefinger? Oh, Mother. Well, I might as well tell you in case he comes barging in here. Now, Judy, what is this all about? 
We sent your picture to a man we got through a matrimonial bureau. You what? He thinks you're snookum. Judy, you sent my picture. Are you trying to marry me off? Don't you like your father? Well, of course, Mother dear, but... Oh, the doorbell, uh-oh. I'll answer it. And if it's that man, I tell you right... Hi, Randolph. I'm staying right where I am, behind this curtain. Oh, so it is you. Snookum. Now, don't you come in here snookumsing me. After the misunderstanding we had, I felt I had to follow you home. Oh. I felt I had to reveal myself to you at last. Well. I'm Jonathan. Well, that's just dandy, but I'll tell well, you... Well, didn't you hear what I said, dearest? I'm Jonathan. Jonathan Inglefinger. Now, now, see here, Mr. Inglefinger. I, I know this isn't your fault, but this, this is a horrible mistake. My children sent you my picture. Your I... children? Yes. Yes, I'm a very happily married woman, and I have two lovely children. Not that I think they're so lovely at the moment, but anyhow, that's what I have. Oh, I see. Well, I, I guess I've kind of made a fool out of myself. Oh, Oh, well, now, 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 don't be unhappy about it, Mr. Inglefinger. You know, it, it really could have happened to everybody. Well, I, uh, I, I'm sorry I bothered you, Snookum. Oh, oh, well, that's all right. It, it just turned out. I'm really sorry it turned out that way for you. Yes, I have built up rather high hopes. Well, goodbye. Well, goodbye, Mr. Inglefinger. Judy, Randolph, where are you? Right here, Mother. Well, come out from behind that curtain, you two. Oh, I just wish you were young enough to spank. That's what I wish. But, Mother, if you'll just let me explain, I can wait till your father hears about this. My picture. Look em. And that's how it was, Barbara. It all ended in devastation. What an awful shame. It's been very hard on the Boy Scouts. Mr. Inglefinger called off the meeting tonight. And we were going to have donuts and cocoa, too. Well, we tried. Well, I guess Aunt Carrie is now doomed to a life of solitary confinement. Oh, Barbara. Yes? You know you were asking me about my lending you Oogie Pringle for a date? Yes. Well, you can have him this week. I'm not allowed to have any dates till Sunday. Thanks, Barbara. But I guess my heart just isn't in it much. Poor Aunt Carrie. Yes, I feel so sorry for her. Oh, that's your doorbell. I'll take it, Barbara. Thanks, Randolph. Why, Mr. Inglefinger. Good evening, Randolph. I'm sort of surprised to see you here. Well, I'm sort of surprised to see you here, too. Randolph. Oh, uh, this is my sister Judy, and this is Barbara Winsocket. Oh, Miss Winsocket's niece, I take it. Why, yes. Oh, I've heard so much about you from your Aunt Carrie. From my Aunt Carrie? Yes, as a matter of fact, I came to call on her. Uh, would you inform her I'm here, please? Well, of course I... Well, excuse me a minute. I'll get her right away. Do sit down, Mr. Inglefinger. Well, I believe I will. I'm a little bit weary this evening. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I mean, uh, well, uh, how's the poison ivy, Mr. Inglefinger? Oh, healing nicely, thanks. Uh, uh, are you calling on the young Miss Windsocket, Randolph? No, she's a little old for me. Oh, she is? Yeah, I just came along with my sister Judy. Judy and Barbara are friends. Bosom friends. Well, that's nice. Here's that carrot. Why, Mr. Inglefinger, how nice to see you. Well, I just felt that I... Well, I had to talk to you this evening, Miss Winsocket. You were so sweet to me when I was in the hospital. In the hospital? Yes, yes, I met Mr. Inglefinger there. Uh, when I broke my leg, you know. Aunt Carrie is nurse's aid, Judy. Well, now that we've got that straightened out, uh, uh, what I was saying, Aunt Carrie, I mean, uh, Miss Winsocket. Yes, Miss Inglefinger? Uh, well... Uh, w would anybody like the younger generation to leave the room? Oh. No, that isn't necessary. Well, we'll go out on the porch anyhow. Come on, girls. Okay. Golly, isn't this amazing? And we never knew she so knew him. Hey, hey, girls, me come here to the window. Trouble. You can hear what they're saying. Randall, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Eavesdropping. It's disgusting. Move over. I don't do uh, it was all perfectly dreadful, Carrie. Uh, may I call you Carrie? Of course. Well, now, you tell me just what happened, Jonathan. Uh, may I uh, call you Jonathan? Oh, of course. I wish they'd stop calling each other names and get to the point. <laughs> well, it seems that I was just a victim. Oh, no, not a victim. Yes, I'm afraid I was. You see, I was deceived in love. Now, not that I, well, not that I was the aggressor. On the other hand, I would say it was rather the woman who pursued me. That's the way some women are. Yes. She chased me in the vernacular of the street. Oh, how 
terrible. Oh, she knew no shame. She called me up at all hours of the night. Shame on Mother. Oh, she sounds very bold. Oh, she was. She wore me down. Do you know that I was in no condition for the scouts whatsoever? You poor dear boy. And the scouts were in no condition for him. And then, just when she'd broken down my resistance, plunged me into a, oh, I might say a dither, the truth came out. A dither? Oh, you poor boy. Oh, I welcome your sweet compassion, Carrie. Thank you. She turned out to be married. No. Oh, yes. Not only that, but she had two children. Cutest little tag she ever saw. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, my heart just aches for you. Oh, thank you, Carrie. Uh, was she uh, uh, attractive? Very. Beautiful. I might say she looked rather like Hedy Lamar. Thanks. I wish Mother were here. You can't imagine, after what I went through, what a comfort it is to look into your uh, wholesome face. Homely face, he means. <laughs> oh, Jonathan. Well, Carrie, you see before you a broken man. I'll do everything in my power to help you forget. That is, if you'll let me, Jonathan. Oh, I will. <laughs> uh, perhaps we could attend a meeting of the uh, Anti-Vivisection League this evening. That would make me forget everything. <laughs> Charming, Carrie. Uh, I should be delighted to escort you. Hey, he's holding your hand. Yeah, and all the way up to the elbow. Randolph, look here in the newspaper. What? Aunt Carrie announced her engagement to Mr. Inglefinger. Really? Mm -hmm. The wedding is set for Wednesday. Jeepers. He must have swept her off her feet. Well, that was a pretty big-sized broom she used. Well, we did it, didn't we? What do you mean, we did it? Well, if we hadn't sent Mr. Inglefinger Mother's picture, he wouldn't have gone to Aunt Carrie's that night to be comforted. You're absolutely right, Judy. I'm going to write to the Throbbing Heart Matrimonial Bureau and tell them that we know a satisfied customer. <laughs> Well, we'll be back with the Fosters next week. But first, don't let acid indigestion impair your efficiency or your disposition. Don't let it spoil your fun or ruin your sleep. Take Tums. Slip one or two Tums in your mouth at the first sign of excess gastric acidity, and you'll have comfort you never dreamed possible. Tums quickly relieve the misery of acid indigestion. They quickly calm that heartburn, that fogginess, and that uncomfortable full feeling. In a jiffy, they have your stomach sweet and fresh. Just try Tums, and you'll carry a roll with you religiously. Tums are convenient and very pleasant to take. Just slip them in your mouth as you would candy mint. There's no mixing, no bother, no water. And get Tums today. Only ten cents a roll at all drugstore counters. But be sure you get Tums for the tummy. T-U-M-S. There are many imitations of Tums, but no substitute for them. Date with Judy is written by Arlene Leslie and stars Louise Erickson and Dix Davis. The music was composed by Paul Sautel and conducted by Constantine Bakalinikov to the courtesy of RKO Studios. The program was produced and directed by Helen Mack. This is Art Baker inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time to keep your date with Judy. And remember, night and day, at home or away, always carry pump. T U M S. This is the National Broadcasting Company. K F I, Los Angeles.